so excited about this video. Today we are doing an in-depth makeup tutorial. I just did my makeup, so I'm gonna be showing you guys how I did this, all the products that I use. I'm going really in detail with all the different techniques that I use to apply things and to blend things and lift your face, make it look natural and glowy. So I shared all of my tips that I can possibly remember in this video. I'm so excited for you guys to see. So yeah, keep watching. Here we are with a bare face. I don't have anything on it right now, really. I put some moisturizer and sunscreen on this morning, but it's definitely absorbed into the skin now. I am putting my hair back. This headband is from Target. It was like $3 and it came with the little towel wrist scrunchies too. I love it. Okay, first I am putting on some lip balm. This is one of my favorites at the moment. It's by the brand Tree Hut. It's their Sugar Lips Candy Cane Lip Butter. It is so thick. I feel like it's more like a mask and it stays on for a really long time. So I love it because it's so hydrating, but it still gives you this like really nice glossy shine. This is just to moisturize my lips while I am doing all of my makeup so that when I'm done, they'll look better when I do like an actual lip combo. So starting out the makeup. The very first product is this Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer Plus. It is the hydrating primer. This is one of my favorite primers that I've found. I just do like two drops. I don't know, I just feel like it helps your makeup look natural and glowy. Then next up, we are using the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop Blur and Smooth Tint Stick. I am using using the shade seven right now. I do three stripes on each of my cheeks, on my chin, on my upper lip, a little bit on my nose, and then some on my forehead like that. This stuff is kind of dry, so it's a little bit hard to blend. That could be my fault because it originally came with like another little plastic thing over this, but I threw it away. And I think that it was actually supposed to keep it from drying out. So maybe I shouldn't have. So since it's kind of dry, I'm gonna spray my face with the Caudalie Beauty Elixir just to help it blend more. And then I'm gonna use this brush Brush. This is an e.l.f. brush. I love it. It's super dense and I use it for everything. Not sure if that's very smart to do. I use it for my foundation, for my blush, for my bronzer, all of it. So it's very versatile. I'm so excited to be doing this video because I feel like I always cut out parts of my get ready with me's where I'm like over explaining my makeup or talking about a product too much because I feel like nobody really cares. And so I figured why not dedicate a whole video to talking about makeup because I love makeup. I think it's so fun. It's so therapeutic. It is my favorite part of my day. Getting ready and doing my makeup is truly such a fun and relaxing time. Okay, I'm really making sure that this is blended in and especially doing it on my jawline so that I don't have any like harsh lines. Next up is concealer. I use the Huda Beauty concealer. This is the luminous matte one. I'm in the shade Vanilla Swirl, which is 3.1B. I do like this concealer, but I don't think it's my favorite. Also, this mirror that I'm using is from Amazon. It should be on my storefront under like bedroom or something. I'm doing a couple dots under my eyes, some more towards the outer corners. I feel like my upper lip always gets really red or it looks like I have a mustache or something when I literally don't. It's very frustrating. So I always put some concealer there. I do it on my chin, on my forehead, just to highlight all the like high points of my face. And then something that I've started doing that makes a huge difference for me is putting a line of concealer right here to kind of like carve out your jawline. And I kind of do this to replace contour Tour, which I will talk about more when we get there. I'm using this Real Techniques makeup sponge. I feel like these work the exact same as the like high-end beauty blenders, but they are like $5. I always blend like the parts that I kind of don't care about as much first because I want the more important places to have more time to like set a little bit. So I'll do like my chin and my forehead first. Maybe I'll do over here because this needs to be very blended. So I don't want to give it too much time to like sit and dry. And then I do my upper lip, kind of like blend it up and around around my nose and then I blend my under eyes and I use a really light hand to kind of just spread out the concealer where I want it and connect the two dots. And then with the second dot, I kind of just like drag it out to create almost like a line, but you really have to blend it, but it's super subtle. It just lifts your face really nicely. And then I feel like I usually get some spots right here where it like isn't fully blended. So I go over my eyelid too. Okay, next is bronzer. I have pretty much stopped contouring my cheekbones. I feel like it ends up just looking a little bit muddy on me. And so if I do use bronzer at all, which is not super common, I will just go in and put some dots on my forehead because it just has pretty much concealer and foundation on it. So it looks very flat. And then I'll do it on my eyes and kind of just like spread it out on the outer corners. This is the bronzer that I'm using. This is the Rare Beauty bronzer stick in the shade Always Sunny. I like it. I feel like this is one of the only bronzer sticks that I've tried that's so easy to 
blend. I feel like I always stayed away from bronzer sticks for that reason, just because they're hard to blend out. But that one's pretty good. But if you're like me and you're not the biggest fan of bronzer sticks, I also use this Say Beauty Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer. This is in the shade Medium Bronze. And I really like it because you can just tap your brush in it and put it exactly where you want it instead of having to like put it on your face and then blend it out. I feel like this allows for a better blend. But recently I've been using the bronzer stick because it's just quicker. I feel like it looks so nice on your eyelids. I kind of just like blend it out like this. Okay, that's it for bronzer. Now is pretty much my favorite step. I'm gonna go in with the Say Beauty Dew Blush in the shade Chili. I love blush and I love this shade. I feel like finding the shade of blush that works well for you is so important. A lot of the blushes that I use are this very like pinky, purpley, mauve type of color. This is another one of my favorites. This is the Rare Beauty Nearly Mauve Melting Blush. I'm almost embarrassed to show you what this looks like. You can tell I love it because I have definitely hit pan. There is barely any of this left, but you can tell like what shade it is. That's what I feel like works well for my skin type. I feel like for a minute I was getting sucked into what was trendy, which is very like bubblegum pink blush, like this color basically. That is just not super flattering on me. I need something a little bit warmer. So this is the one I've been using. This is where I place my blush just like on the top of my cheekbone towards the back middle. And if I were to do bronzer, if you are a bronzer girly, I would put it like right right here, like right behind the blush basically. But I have found that for me, I end up looking like Neapolitan ice cream when I do bronzer and blush. The brown and the pink just don't blend well together on me. Maybe I'm just blending it wrong, but yeah, I've just noticed that. And I think it looks more natural and pretty when I just do blush. So I'm blending it mostly trying to like stick to like this area, but I do take a little bit of the excess on the brush and put it on like the apples of my cheeks too. Also, this is where the the line of concealer comes in that we put right here earlier. I feel like that acts as like a little barrier so that your blush doesn't go under that line. I don't know what it is, but I feel like that does a really good job of keeping the blush where you want it instead of it getting muddy and going like all over this chunk of your face. I hope that makes sense. I feel like the line and keeping your blush high really acts as like contour. Obviously all of this is based around my face shape and what works well for me. So you'll definitely have to experiment and figure out what works for you. Okay, blush is halfway done. Cream blush is done, I should say. So now is time for powder. Recently, what I've been doing is a little bit different than usual. I just ran out of my translucent setting powder. So what I've been doing is using this hourglass palette. This is the ambient palette, I think is what it's called. Here's the back in case that helps. I'm also going to try to have all these products linked in case you want anything, but I take shade four on this Real Techniques setting brush. This is what it looks like. And I just pat it on my inner corner and and drag it out and down, creating like a triangle. And I always set my under eyes first because I feel like that's what's most important. And then I go in on my upper lip and really press it into my smile lines, which I'm starting to get. Kind of crazy, I'm 21. And I see very faint smile lines, which is super bittersweet because I think it's very cute that clearly I'm smiling a lot. So I'm getting some smile lines, but at the same time I'm like, mm, not yet, let's wait like maybe a few more years. Now I'm setting my forehead focusing on this area right here. And then I set this little line of concealer that we did. And then I go in with this really ratty brush. This is a Morphe brush I got for Christmas years ago. And I think it came in a set. I've been using it for blush. I actually really like it. It's really messed up, but it works well because the top I feel like has some like bristles that are a little bit longer. And so it has like a very like soft application, if that makes sense, almost like a stipled brush. Is that what it's called? I don't know, but now now I'm going in with this shade right here, which is shade three. It's this really pretty blush, it's a powder blush, and just a little bit. These hourglass palettes are so pigmented. So only get a tiny bit on your brush and learn from my mistakes. But I'm just lightly going over the area that I applied my blush and setting it. Okay, I had to give my camera a break because it was overheating, but I actually remembered something new that I've been doing recently with my blush and my highlight. So I accidentally did this side wrong. What I've been doing is taking this highlighter shade, which is six, and taking the same brush that I use for powder. I actually have two of them, one for powder, one for highlight, and taking like the side of it. See how this is one side and then it's like more narrow right here. I take this side and do a little bit in the highlight. And before I do powder blush, I will put it right in the spot that I want my highlight to be. So like right here. And after I like place it, I'll just blend 
blend it out a little bit and then over top of that that's when i do my powder blush because i feel like i used to have an issue with my highlight looking just like a streak of like gold or shimmer on my cheek instead of a natural glow like you could tell it was highlight that i put on i don't want to be able to tell i want it to look like i am just glowing from within so i feel like when i put it on in that very strategic way and then put powder blush on top of it to kind of like blend it in that just really makes it look more natural rather than just placing highlight right on top of powder blush like on this side like you can see where the highlight is if that makes sense so i've been trying to blend it really well i'm just going over with my brush and blending it in on this side since i forgot and then usually with the excess blush that's on my brush i will take it on the bridge of my nose like that i won't let it touch the button part of my nose if that makes sense because i feel like that makes you look like you're sick and that's something that a lot of people do that is just not really my thing i think putting it on the bridge is so much cuter it just makes you look like sun-kissed so that is what the blush looks like all set now it's time for eyeliner so i was going to say this earlier when talking about powder i feel like there's two things for me that don't matter if they're drugstore or high-end makeup and that is eyeliner and powder i definitely could be convinced otherwise i don't think that that's really like set in stone but i just haven't found a huge difference in using high-end versus drugstore with those two products specifically there are certain ones that i have found to be a lot better when they're high-end especially blush next i'm going in with the rare beauty gel eyeliner this is the brown one like i said i have not seen a huge difference with this one compared to a drugstore gel eyeliner this was sent to me along with pretty much every other rare beauty product that i'm going to use in this video and i would not have bought this with my own money honestly because it's just gel eyeliner i haven't noticed anything like super super special about it it does go on very smooth like you don't have to like draw it on it kind of just glides i do like it it's not that i don't like it it's just this was probably like 16 18 dollars or something which you can get a drugstore eyeliner for like two dollars but to do my eyeliner i really have to focus this is going to be hard to explain but i take my finger put it on my hair not on my face and i kind of just like pull back a little bit so that i have like a smooth surface to draw on i guess instead of doing it just like this so i just kind of take the eyeliner in the corner and just drag it out let's zoom in for this because i feel like it's needed i feel like an old like 2016 beauty guru and i kind of love it but this is what the eyeliner looks like right now we're not done so i did a straight line i kind of just follow this line like my waterline i kind of just keep that going so instead of just dragging it like straight out or up too far like really just follow the line that your eye naturally creates now i'm going to connect the tip of it to my lash line and just kind of draw a straight line over this is what it ends up looking like but i'm going to take a little angled brush this one is a morphe one and i'm going to hold it so that the higher part is facing my nose and i am just going to drag the eyeliner out a little bit and kind of just blend it all together blend it into my lash line almost smoke it out not quite but this is what it ends up looking like by the way this is also not my everyday makeup this is for when i have time to like put on a full face oof that eye did not turn out well <laughs> it's okay because we can fix it with the brush that's why i like using gel eyeliner rather than like a liquid or felt liner i feel like those ones can look really good and really sharp but these ones are just much safer and like easier to work with you have a little bit more wiggle room my camera's overheating again so i'll be right back another step that i will occasionally do usually before my eyeliner but i totally forgot i don't think it's necessary today because i really like the way the bronzer looks on my eyelids but when my eyelids are looking a little bit too like flat for me not dimensional enough i will take this fenty beauty shadow stick in the shade cumin get it and this is what it looks like when you roll it up and i'll just kind of like draw some on my eyelids kind of messy and just use this brush and just blend it out i don't try to like put it in my crease or do it in any specific way i kind of just put it all over i feel like this is a good way to warm up your makeup if you feel like it's a little bit too cool i wasn't liking my makeup the other day i had already finished it and everything and i realized it was because it looked really cold so i went in even after doing my mascara with this and it made my makeup look 10 times better so just thought i'd share i really like that next up we have mascara so i use this tarte eyelash curler and i don't really have any like special techniques for curling my eyelashes i just really try to get it as close to my lash line as possible and then just like clamp it a few times i hold it for as long as i have the patience for the longer the better i also got a lash lift recently so i feel like it's kind of worn off but something it actually really helped with that i wasn't expecting it to was keeping my eyelashes like separated i feel like they're so easy to work with and my mascara has looked good every single day that i've put it on since i've gotten a lash lift whereas that wasn't really 
the case before. Also, this is the mascara that I'm using. This is my current favorite. It's the Hourglass Unlock Instant Extensions Mascara in Ultra Black. I make sure none of my bottom lashes are like sticking to the top ones before I start applying. And then I kind of like do the ends first and then just like kind of work my way down to my lash line and really try to get like this inner corner right here and then this outer corner. I use like the tip of the brush to kind of like shape the lashes at the end exactly how I want them. And I just keep going over it until I like the way that they look and they're all like separated and lengthened. I always end up getting some on my eyelids. So good thing I never do a lot of eyeshadow because it would just get wiped off. I take a Q-tip and just wipe it off basically as soon as I can so that it doesn't have any time to dry and it's just easy to get off my eyelid. I try to get like really close to my lash line and get everything off that I possibly can. I absolutely love this mascara. See how much more open this eye looks? It is so lengthening too. I also curl my eyelashes one at a time. I don't curl them both and then do mascara on both. I curl mascara, curl mascara. That way I can immediately put mascara on and my eyelashes don't really have time to fall before I like try to set them in place. Okay, here is what both eyes done look like. Now it's time for eyebrows. I am almost out of my Rare Beauty Clear Brow Gel. I don't think I will be repurchasing. I feel like it just flakes a little bit. I hate when brow gels flake. It just looks gross. So to do my brows, no matter what brow gel I use, I do it the exact same. Actually, one I found that I really like is the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. But if you have any good recommendations for brow gels that don't flake, please leave them in the comments. But I always get like as little as possible on the brush. And then I brush it through my eyebrows to get like a good coat of it in there. And then I use a spoolie to shape them. So this doesn't have any brow gel on it. I feel like using a different brush to actually shape it just prevents you from getting too much brow gel on your eyebrows, which would lead to more flaking. So this is how I shaped this brow. I kind of just put this part up and then everything else just like angled up and back. And then the little like stray, like longer parts, I just kind of tuck down. I've never really been like a fill in my eyebrows type of girly. I just feel like it looks a little bit too harsh on me because I already have dark eyebrows. Here is what we have. Now I'm just going to take a powder puff. There's nothing even on this. And I'm just going to press the makeup into my face a little bit and the parts that I put powder on and concealer basically. So under my eyes, I'm gonna carve out this little spot, my chin, my upper lip, and my forehead. So basically everything but my blush. I feel like that just helps you look a little bit more matte in all of those places. And then it helps you really glow in the areas that you want to be glowing. So we could definitely stop here and just throw on some setting spray. This is the setting spray that I've been using, the Benefit Professionals Super Setter. But I do wanna show you guys how I've been doing my fake freckles. So we're gonna do that. Usually I don't do fake freckles with like a more heavier look like this one. I usually just do it when I'm doing a really simple look with just like concealer and blush and then just throwing on some fake freckles. But we're gonna add a little bit today. So these are the fake freckles that I use. These are from TikTok shop. I really like them. They're the water resistant faux freckles in light dark. So I take the brush out and see how it's like a little bit clumpy. I like to get all the excess off so that there's less product on there to potentially mess up your makeup with. So what I do is I pretty much only put it on the sides of my nose. I am super, super careful with it. Some people just like go in and just start going like this. I can't do that because I want the little dots to be as perfect as I can get them instead of it just being like little blobs. If I'm doing it too fast, I'll accidentally do like a little line or something and that just looks weird. So I try as hard as I can to just get some little dots on there and then maybe like a couple going off the side of your nose. And I just take my finger and I just start going like this and blending it in and blend it in a lot because I don't want like super pronounced freckles. I want it to just look very natural and add a couple more in spots where I feel like it needs it. And I mostly keep them off the actual bridge of my nose and keep it on the sides. I use fake freckles to kind of contour my nose in a way. So there's gonna be like a line of freckles like that to kind of like carve out the shape of my nose, but then you blend it in so it's not harsh, obviously. And then the finishing touch is adding a freckle right on the top of your nose like this, where you want it to look like you have a button nose and then just blending it out. So it kind of contours your nose like that. Sorry about the lighting. Now I'm going to take the Q-tip that I used earlier and use the clean end of it and take off all the makeup on my lips. 
because I always manage to get concealer on my lips and it just makes them look smaller. So I want them to look very defined. This is what they look like now that the makeup has been taken off. And then it's time to go in with setting spray. I really like this one because it goes on very evenly. I always like hold my hair back too. Also, when you're spraying it, you don't have to do it like really fast. You can just hold it down and the spray comes out super evenly. So you'll kind of see what I mean. Hopefully you could tell what I meant. Last but not least, it's my favorite step, which is the lip combo. We're gonna stick with a pretty simple one today. It honestly changes every day, so I can't really tell you what my lip combo is because it's always different. So I'm using the Huda Beauty lip liner in the shade Pinky Brown. And to do lip liner, I keep zooming you guys in and out, but let's zoom in one more time. I like to slightly overline my Cupid's bow and this little line on the bottom of my lip, but nothing on the sides because that's where it starts to look really unnatural. So sometimes I'll do a defined Cupid and then other times I'll connect it in the middle and have more of like a round full lip and then on the bottom Oh, I cannot talk while I do this part I just overline that little spot and then connect it to the sides since I'm doing just lip balm over this today I'm gonna kind of fill in the rest of my lips and then we are going in with the tree hut lip butter Love this stuff so much and putting it on see how it like goes on It's like super thick and then once you roll it in it's very shiny. It has the prettiest look that is my finished makeup of routine. right now because it took me so long to go through and explain everything but i hope that helped just trying to be as thorough as possible i hope i did not forget anything also i really like this foundation it's the maybelline fit me foundation i use this sometimes too i'm trying to think of any other products that i kind of like switch between that i like that i would want to show you guys i do also love this charlotte tilbury blush this is the one in the shade pink gasm and when i want a sharper eyeliner i really like this glamnetic felt tip eyeliner this has a black shade and a brown shade so this is perfect but that is it i hope Hope you enjoyed i had so much fun filming this like i said i love makeup this is a video that i always strayed away from doing because i thought most people would find it boring but hopefully that's not the case i have been getting a lot of requests for this so yeah i hope you enjoyed thank you so much for watching if you stayed until this point comment the lipstick emoji i hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see you all very soon bye